share screen, share, share, share. All right. Contents. Okay. So I will have to count ten seconds, then I will start. Buenos dias, colleagues and friends. Shout out to Dr. Alejandro Lavaque, my very good friend. Thank you for your invitation. Some financial disclosures. This is the flow of my topic. Retinal vein occlusion is the second most common site threatening retinal vascular disease following diabetic retinopathy. It is the second most common site threatening retinal vascular disease. And RVO is the most common primary disease of the retina. In CRVO, there is hypoxia that induces upregulation of VEGF, which appears to play an important role in the development of neovascularization and macular edema secondary to CRVO. The presence of VEGF induces expression of thromboplastin, a protein procoagulation tissue factor that may aggravate retinal ischemia induced by CRVO. VEGF also leads to retinal endothelial swelling, which may lead to further capillary non-perfusion. The OCT shows retinal thickening and cyst exchanges, which are predominantly in the inner nuclear layer with accompanying outer plexiform layer and outer nuclear layer changes. Macro edema is caused by the breakdown of the blood retinal barrier, vitreoretinal adhesion or secretion of vasopermitted permitted factors such as VEGF and interleukin-6. ME and cellular damage happens in the presence of inflammatory cytokines angiogenic agents, growth factors, and intercellular adhesion molecules. These substances are associated with increased vascular permeability, breakdown of BRB, remodeling of extracellular matrix, and upregulation of pro-angiogenic factors. Branch retinal vein occlusion is associated with atherosclerotic changes in the retinal arterioles, which causes compression of the adjacent vein leading to thrombus formation and vein occlusion. The presence of hemodynamic variations due to the venous contouring at the site of artery over vein intersections. Macroedema is a common site threatening complication of CRVO. Majority of patients suffer from visual reduction to loss of vision because of macroedema. And sometimes there's relapse outside the phobia of the edema. Concerning demographics, in greater than 40 years old, BRVO is the most frequent form with a prevalence of 0.5 to 2%, followed by CRVO with a prevalence of 0.1 to 0.2%. Both are associated with macular edema. Advances in the understanding of the pathogenesis of macular edema secondary to RVO have led to new therapies as well as changes in management guidelines. Previous studies by SCOR, Cruz, Bravo, Geneva, and Copernicus, they all evaluated intravitreal injections of anti-VEGF agents or corticosteroids for macular edema secondary to RVO. In the randomized clinical trials, mean changes in best corrected visual apathy in letters at month 12 in patients with BRVO patients are seen in the middle column. The mean changes in BCVA in letters in month 12 in patients with CRVO, the BCVA results are seen on the last column. In these studies, although intravitreal anti-VEGF are mainstay of treatment for CME due to RVO, there are a considerable number of cases who do not respond or become reconsultant with time to anti-VEGF treatment. In another study by Peter A. Campochiaro et al. in 2015, the study showed the substances that contribute to edema are the following, hepatocyte growth factor, endocrine gland VEGF, activinin A, persephine, and pentaxine. 
Addressing the presence of these substances may help answer our problem with macular edema. The first three substances are seen much more in these patients. These aqueous proteins are known to influence vascular cells prior to or after injection of dexamethasone implant. The changes in the protein levels were correlated with changes in edema. Reduction of the hepatocyte growth factor by 20 to 64 percent in four to six weeks are noted. Treating patients with RBO is like dancing the Argentine tango. The ophthalmologist has learned to react, to adapt to the findings at hand and decide decisively, similar to dancing the tango, he has to move in cadence, slow and fast, according to the severity of the macular condition. There are several reasons why the responsive treatments are poorer than expected. Choroidal thickness may affect visual improvements. A thin choroid, a hypothesis due to the mechanical compression to the macular choroid secondary to CRBO-related macular edema may deliver decreased amounts of oxygen and nutrients to the outer retina. This decreased delivery system may affect signal generation by the photoreceptors or loss of overlying photoreceptors as consequence. To an extent, choroidal thickness may affect visual acuity. Orhan Altonel et al. wrote the findings of Akagi Kereshegi that demonstrates that there is decreased parafoveal cone density in areas affected by macular edema, as well as disruptive cone mosaic arrangement. Non-improvement of vision has been associated with disruption of photoreceptor and atrophy of the inner retina. Long-standing CME and responsive to anti-VEGF therapy leads to photoreceptor atrophy. The absence of ELM or ellipsozone at baseline cannot lead to an unappreciable recovery of vision. In ischemic CRBO, it is more influenced by the alteration in blood flow, rapidly leading to morphological, functional, and probably irreversible damage. In one study where micropyrimity was used, they found that retinal sensitivity showed a negative correlation to macular thickness and both outer and inner retinal thickness, the larger morphological parameters were accompanied by lower micropyrimetric measurements. A thicker macula might be responsible for reduced photoreceptor function as well. An abnormal inner and outer segment junction and presence of serous retinal detachment at baseline correlate to a decreased retinal sensitivity. If we have reasons for failures, we also have reasons for great success as well. A thinner retina is associated with increased retinal sensitivity. Positive findings for having improved vision while under treatment is the consideration of photoreceptor layer thickness was more significant to the improvement in visual acuity than central retinal thickness, change in the early period of Osirdex injection. So it's going to be PLT is greater, is more or more important than CRT. The alternate nuclear layer thickness was more significant to the improvement in visual acuity than CRT decrement. Integrity of the foveal receptor layer may well be necessary to regain good vision and less area of non-perfusion also points to better vision. Shet et al. using ERG and OCT for macular edema using bevacizumab showed similar results with the morphological changes, which is improved vision in two months. Yamike et al. using bevacizumab for macular edema, there was an increase in the foveal thickness at three to six months, which correlates with the findings of Shet et al. that improved vision in two months, but decreased vision by three months. Moshos et al. triamcinolone treatment showed mean BCVA improvement at one to three months. However, retreatment is needed by six months. These findings are similar to the next slide. Centre et al. using triamcinolone acetone showed reduction of foveal thickness significant at one month post-treatment. 
the third to six month progressive increase in foveal thickness. There was a resolution pattern of 50% of B in BRBO and 44% with CRBO. Although central macular thickness on OCT improved in all steroid groups, there was no statistically significant difference between the dexamethasone implant and triamcinolone in terms of BCVA and central macular thickness. And in some patients, monthly injections of an anti-VEGF neutralizing protein do not eliminate edema, suggesting that in these patients, VEGF is not completely neutralized. It was initially thought that the goal of treatment in RBO would be to control edema and maintain vision until normalization of the underlying disease process and elimination of the need for injections. This progression of the disease makes continued injections necessary to control edema, and some patients experience permanent loss of vision from ischemic damage to the macular damage from chronic or recurrent edema. Therefore, the final goal in RBO treatment still needs to be studied more. Goals that need to be met, though may change as we gain more understanding of the disease process in retinal vein occlusions are a functional macula to be maintained over an estimated period of two to three years. Resolution of macular edema can be considered even if there's an increase of CRT of less than five microns with a small interretinal fluid on OCT. Macular edema resolution is complete absorbance of macular edema regardless of visual apathy or need for injection. So our take home message, understanding the basic pathology, anatomical integrity, and substances involved in macular edema due to RBOs will enable us to apply properly the different methods or treatments available, for example, lasers, intravitreal anti-VEGF injections, dexamethasone implants, and triamcinolone. These are my references, and thank you very much. Muchas gracias.